Hey there, Kevin from Happy Coding here. And today I want to create kind of an image filter where you take an image and you take a set of colors, uh, like red, green, blue, you know, colors. Uh, and the output is that image recolored using only the colors that you gave it. So if I have an image and then I give it red and blue, then that image will not contain any green. Or if I give it like pink and purple, it will only contain pink and purple. So we will be sort of replacing the pixels in the image with the closest color for each pixel. So um, I could talk about like the background of why I wanna do that uh, today, but I think I'm gonna skip over that, maybe save that for the end if I have time, but I'm just gonna jump into it. So uh, here we have our P5 editor and I haven't written any code yet. I did, um, before this video, I did upload a bunch of images just so that I have them, um, just so that you wouldn't have to watch me spend 20 minutes finding images and then uploading them. So uh, if you're watching this video and you're following along, then maybe pause right here and just upload a bunch of images to your sketch you you don't need as many as i have here uh, i like to fiddle around quite a bit but you, re you really need like one or two um cool so i have my images and i have my sketch so here we are so the first thing i want to do is load an image so let's call it image maybe and then let's use p5's preload function to load that image. Um, I think it's just load image and then a name of a file. I put mine in a directory. It's kind of optional, but um, I have a bunch of them. So that's why I put it in a directory just to organize them a little bit more, a little bit better. Uh, so let's just start with handy dandy B, buzz, buzz, buzz. And so I have my image, it's loaded, I think. And let me draw my image here. So I'm gonna call the image function image zero, zero. So I'm drawing an image at the top left corner and yeah, there's my B. Um, my image, I think all of these are 500 by 500. I think I resized them to that, but my canvas is 400 by 400. So the image is kind of going off the side of the screen. There's a few things I could do. You know, I could just change the uh, size of my canvas to match the size of my image, but I want to be a little bit uh, safer than that. So what I want to do is resize the image. So I'm going to call it resize here width and height. So now I'm guaranteeing that the image I'm working with is the exact same size as my canvas. So now I should see the image kind of size with the canvas, which means that it might stretch out if the uh, aspect ratio of the image does not match the aspect ratio of the canvas. Like you see, it kind of gets squished, but eh, I'm okay with that. That's, that's, I'm just going to kind of avoid that problem for myself, but um, you might think about cropping your image, which is what I did ahead of time. I made them all squares, or you might think about, you know, different things like changing the size of your canvas or adding like black bars around your image so that the aspect ratio is maintained, but I'm just going to use squares. Cool. So I've got my B, I've got my image and I'm drawing my image. Nice. Uh, so next, what do I want to do? Um, so my goal is to define a set of colors and then replace the colors in the image with those colors. So let's say my colors are blue and orange. So instead of you know yellow and green and maybe this is like brown and black, um, I would only use the colors that I gave it. And I, I forgot what examples I just used, like blue and orange maybe. So like maybe this would be closer to blue. So this whole background would be blue. Maybe this yellow is closer to orange, so these flowers would be orange, and the B would probably be a mix of, of all of the above. So that's the goal I'm going for. Now, how I wanna do that, um, let me think about that. Uh, so I know that I wanna maybe go pixel by pixel and uh, like recolor the image. So instead of drawing the image this way, what I'm going to do is iterate over the the pixels in the image. So y is zero, y is less than, I could say image dot height here, and I guess that's probably more correct, but since I've already guaranteed that my image is the same size as my canvas, I'm just gonna use height here. Um, 
to save myself a couple keystrokes. And then same thing for x, let x equal zero, x is less than width, x plus plus. So now I've got a loop that um, loops over the pixels. And what do I want to do? I want to say something like const image color or pixel color or something like that. And I'm going to call image.get xy, which gives me the color of that specific pixel. And just to get something working, I'm going to call like point xy and I'm going to change the color to image color. So uh, notice that I'm no longer calling the image function. I, um, I, I took that out and instead I'm looping over the pixels in the image and I'm drawing it kind of manually. So before I do anything else, let me call no loop here. Otherwise I'm going to draw uh, 500 by 500 pixels 60 times a second and my computer will melt. So what I should see is an error because I spelled width wrong. <laughs> width. Now what I should see is, I should see the same thing. Basically I should see the image, but the difference is that I am drawing the image manually. So I am drawing each pixel. And cool, that seems to work. I've got my B. And next, what do I want to do? Mm. So right now I'm drawing the color that comes straight from the image. But what I want to do is sort of define a list of uh, like allowed colors or a color palette that I can pick from. So let me maybe do that up here. Let uh, palette, I think that's how you spell it. Um, let me actually just double check that. <laughs> um, palette, yeah, yeah, okay, cool, that's right. Um, so I've got my palette variable and I want to maybe, uh, there's a couple ways I could do this, but let me just define it here. So I want palette to be an array and I could do a few things here. I could call like the color function to get myself a couple of colors. Let me just start with this. So R maybe, maybe just start with RGB. So R, G, B, maybe I could comment this, but whatever. So now my palette is an array that contains three colors, R, G, and B. All right. So next, what I want to do is down in here, I want to take the color that's from the image and find the color that's closest to it in the palette. So maybe let me define another function. So like function, function, get palette color, something like that um, with a color variable. So image color, whatever. Um, and let's think about this. So what I want to do is, so I'm going to kind of treat the color components. So the colors in the palette and the color that's, that's coming from the image. I want to treat that sort of as a, as a three dimensional point. So it's RGB and you can think about it as like X, Y, Z. So it's coordinate space, but really it's color space. And that sounds a little complicated, but all that means is when I like find the distance between them. So I think there's a dist function in the P5 library. So like dist, um, I th I'm wondering if there's like a distance squared function. Mm, no, I might be able to just do it myself, but it doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, anyway, so what I want to do is maybe start with a uh, min distance, and I want to set it equal to some unreasonably high number, just because I, I want to find the closest one. So then I'm going to go for a const C of palette, something like that. I always forget JavaScript for loop syntax. Um, what I want to do is say const uh, color distance equals. Um, so actually what I want to do here is maybe give myself some variables. So image R equals red 
image color. So I'm splitting the color up into its uh, components. So R, G, B, red, blue, green. So I've got like R, G, and B from, from my image color. And I want to maybe do the same thing here. So const palette, uh, let me just add palette R equals red C, and then kind of the same thing, R, G, and B. There might be a, a smarter way to do this, but I think this will work. Green, blue. All right, so now I've got my RGB from the image and I've got my RGB from the palette color. And now what I can do is call dist function with those, those coordinates or those, those values, image R, image G, image B. I think this will take uh, three, three parameters, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, yeah, yeah, I will. All right, so image R, image G, image B, and then like palette, it's kind of an awkward word to spell over and over again. I should have maybe chose a different name for it. Palette B. And it's uh, annoying. Um, maybe like that. All right, so let me, I'm suspicious that this is blue. Why are you blue? Palette, oh, because I spelled it wrong. Palette. That's one of the nice things about syntax highlighting is that it gives you the, uh, gives you little hints like that. All right. So now I've got my distance between the color that uh, that's in the palette and the color that's in the image. And now what I want to do is like an if statement. So if color distance is less than min distance, then, so what I want to do is like let uh, target color, something like that. Uh, let's just leave it blank for now. Uh, target color equals C and min distance equals color distance. So I'm, I'm using this loop to find the, the color that's in the palette that's closest to my uh, image color or the color of the pixel that I'm currently looking at. And so now target color, after this loop completes, the target color will point to the, the closest color and I can maybe just return target color. So now I have my get palette color function, which returns a color. So what I can do is maybe const palette color equals get palette color from the image color. And that was a lot of code to write without testing it. So I almost guarantee that something broke, but we'll see. Spell that right? Probably not, but whatever. Um, let me just hit run and see what happens. It might break horribly, but we'll see. Ah, oh, that, that worked, um, I think. <laughs> uh, so what we see is uh, the, the image has been sort of recolored using only the colors that I gave it, R, G, and B. And it's not particularly interesting yet because sort of all of the Pixels in the middle got our closest to red, which isn't really unexpected because it was like a bunch of yellows and, and like warmer colors. So what I might do is like add some colors here, maybe black and white. And just kind of see, see if that fills it out in any more interesting ways. Kind of, yeah. So you can see that, uh, you know, there's maybe some shadows and some some light i could maybe add a few more colors so r g b that's going to be like yellow i think um maybe r g b that's going to be like cyan and maybe color r and b that's going to be like magenta purple something like that so I could just, you know, fill out this palette a little bit more. And 
it's going to take a little bit longer each time because it's, it's going through more colors but yeah you can you can kind of start to see it um i think maybe that that uh image wasn't particularly interesting because it's it's only a couple colors anyway So you can kind of start to see that, you know, different colors, different images will have different, uh, different patterns, different effects. So let me think about where I want to go from here. I could, I could play around with different palettes. I could just keep trying different images. Um, let me think. Mm. I could play around with like some animation maybe. Let me let me just try a couple different um different images just to see what uh things look like. <laughs> uh you kind of keep probably you, you probably you don't know what this image was originally. I do. Um it's like a picture of a cat um in a in a bunny hat. <laughs> um but that's funny. Um, so I think maybe one thing I would like to try is, hmm, let me, let me go back. Um, so actually the reason I'm sort of doing this, um, this, this exercise going like creating this image filter is because of an event that I've been sort of participating in over the last few days. And that event is, I'm, I'm awkwardly waiting for this to stop loading. Okay. Um, that event is January. So January is this event that goes all through January where every day you get a different prompt and the prompt gives you sort of ideas for a project to work on that day. So I've done a few of these, um, like wrong lines, recursive lines, loopers, actually all of these were, were from January. So I've, I've got videos for a few of them and I've got examples on happy coding for, for all of them if you want to check out the code. So the, the sort of the reason I, I started creating this image filter is today's prompt is these five colors and I have had this, this idea of the, like the image replacing colors. Uh, I've had this project in my head for a while. It's actually something I created back in processing in like a few years ago and I wanted to sort of redo it in P5. So I, I kind of want to take these images or these colors and apply them to an image and that'll be my sort of January 23rd uh, project. So um, what I could do is have take my palette from from those colors so this will be my palette and I have prepared that line of code because uh, otherwise it's like awkward to watch me sit here and like copy paste and type so let me just paste that in here so my palette is those sort of five colors and before I was using the color function here I'm using the whatever this is called the, the notation that takes uh, I think it's hexadecimal um, but it's like RGB, like HTML color code. Um, but it's the same kind of idea where this defines a, a color. So it's like 26, 46, 53 RGB. Um, and it's in hexadecimal, so you can have like letters and stuff in there. But anyway, so that's, that's where these colors come from. So uh, when I looked at these colors, they sort of reminded me of maybe like a sunset or like a horizon um, where there's like water, maybe like trees. And so I prepared a bunch of uh, pictures that I've taken over the years of horizons. And I kind of just want to like throw them at the palette and see what happens. So I've commented out my sort of example palette and I've replaced it with my January palette. Let's just see what, see what that does. Cool. Yeah, man, I like that. Um, it's kind of annoying because um, just for the video purposes, because you don't know what this looked like ahead of time. Um, so that's kind of 
like not, not going to be super interesting for you, but let me just run through a couple of these and, and see, see what they look like, see if I want to make any changes to the sort of how everything works. Oh man, that's cool. Like you can kind of see that this is like, uh, you know, there's buildings on the left and right and there's, um, you know, like a sunset in the background. Um, that's pretty cool. All right. But I think I do know the next thing I want to do. And that is, so I want to maybe pause here and say like, this code is, is pretty complete. It, it does exactly what I set out to do. And so if you're sort of like, if you're happy with like the level at which this code is like feel free to sort of stop coding here and you know maybe pause the video or just stop the video and you know you can be pretty happy with with what this already does and play with your own palettes play with your own uh, images and, and see see what interesting things you come up with but i'm going to take it kind of to like one more level and that is adding some amount of animation and part of why I'm doing that is because it's kind of annoying that you can't see what the image was first. So, uh, and the other reason is it kind of takes a while to load. So when I hit play, there's this awkward like few seconds where it's, it's loading the image and then it's looping over every pixel and it's finding the closest uh, color and then it's drawing it and that just takes a while and It'll take even longer on things like mobile devices or you know like laptops and stuff so I want to make it a little bit more interesting so what I want to do is mm, so I've got my image and I think I want to instead of doing no loop um, what I want to do so now draw will be called 60 times a second I am absolutely not going to hit the play button yet because my computer will melt but instead of going instead of doing the entire image at once what I want to do is maybe go and do it like one one line at a time so transform menu oh, gross I don't know if that worked um, I did okay uh, so now my draw function only does a single line and I don't have this sort of Y variable anymore and what I'm going to do is create the Y variable up here let uh, I'm just gonna call it Y for now it's kind of a goofy name but eh, whatever so Y is zero here and then in draw after draw is done I'm going to say y plus plus and I'm going to say like if y is greater than or equal to height then no loop so what I'm doing is draw is called 60 times a second and so instead of looping over the entire image in one frame what I'm going to do is each frame I'm going to do another row of the image so what I should see is the image sort of load from top to bottom and then when it reaches the bottom, I call no loop because I, there's nothing left for me to do. So it wouldn't make sense to keep going off the edge of the screen. I could do something else here, like reset it or pick a different palette or something. That could be interesting, but for now I'm just gonna call no loop. So let's just see. And yeah, <laughs> that's, it's doing something. It's doing what I asked it to do, but unfortunately what I asked it to do is not what I wanted it to do. Funny how that works. So let me get rid of this called a background and now I should see them sort of stack and yeah so you see it uh, sort of animate in over time and I think that's that's pretty cool um, and let's see the the next thing I want to do is maybe in setup the last thing I want to do in setup is just draw my image so that instead of starting out with just a blank background we start out with the background being the image so uh, image zero zero so now i should see the image to start with and it should kind of animate in over top of that and yeah man that's 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 awesome um i actually really like that so you you can see that like the image, it starts out showing the image and then um, animates in the palette over time. So let's just try a couple different images. That's cool. I took this picture in like San Francisco, I think. Oh, 
oh man, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really happy with that. And so <laughs> that's cool. Uh, I'm really happy with this. This is really cool. So you can see that this image is a like a recoloring of the original image using the five colors that January gave me today. Mm. So there's a there's a bunch of things I could do. Let me just I'm really tempted to just play around with like looking at a bunch of different images. I think that's San Francisco again. And it's cool, man. Like it kind of like highlights some like patterns that you don't see in the original image. And I think that's really neat. Um, I think this is, this is Singapore. Let's see what it does like down in the city. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really pleased with myself here. I, this is like, that's, that's better than what I was expecting. That's so cool. Uh, anyway, I could sit here and congratulate myself on what a, what a great job I've done, but instead I maybe want to play with one other idea and that is, so right now I draw the image and then I animate the, uh, the palette in one row at a time and that's, that's cool and I really like that, but instead what I might do is, uh, so I've done like Right now I've got my Y starting at zero. Let's think about this. Um, and I've got my X going like from zero to width. And instead what I could do is choose a random X, Y every single time. So like const X equals random width, const Y equals random height. Um, this, let's just see what this does. So now I start by showing my image and then over time I fill it with the palette kind of randomly. And I have no idea what this will end up looking like, but let's try it. Mm, I can't tell if that's doing anything. <laughs> I think it is not doing anything. And I think I know why. I think it's because this random function returns like decimals. So I could get like, 55.55555 here. And I'm guessing that this image.get function does not play well with that. So let's see, uh, is there a floor function in here? Floor, yeah. So floor will sort of drop the, the decimal off of my number. So if it's 55.55555555, it will just become 55. X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. Yeah, I think that should work. I can't tell. I still kind of don't think that it's doing anything. And why is that? Image color equals image to get x y and I'm drawing to x y. Let me try one thing. Let me do. Let me draw an ellipse here or circle uh, x y at like I don't know ten something like that. Um, so I'm just going to make my pixel a little bigger. Let's do no stroke and let's do fill. So I'm wondering if maybe it's just taking a really long time to to notice anything. And, oh yeah, okay. I think that uh, maybe it's it was doing exactly what I wanted to, but since it's only drawing like a single pixel at a time, it's gonna take a while before you really notice that anything is changing. So I, I've made the, the pixel that we're drawing a little larger, and now it's a little bit more obvious what's happening. And I kind of like that effect. Uh, what I might do is speed this up a little bit, like a little bit artificially. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm not sure if I actually needed that floor after all. Um, I'm going to do something like this where I draw a hundred pixels at a time, something like that. So now I've got a for loop that 
each frame loops 100 times and for each of those 100 times it draws a random and it's still circle but let's just see and yeah oh, that's cool that's trippy that's like uh sort of like a i don't know almost a van gogh animated thingy uh let me just try to change this back to point x y let's just see i kind of like the weird like circle effect but i don't know let's let's just look stroke So if I squint, I can see the uh, pixels coming in. Um, let me maybe do a couple things. Let's go to a thousand and let's maybe choose a different picture. And yeah, I think you can see it a little bit more obviously. Um, I think that I, eh, it's, it's okay. It's a little subtle, but yeah, over time you can see like now it's like pretty obviously filtered but I, I don't know I kind of I actually think that I liked the line effect a little bit better so uh, I think I'm going to change it back but you could play around with the the idea of like what you draw in here so I did kind of like the circle uh, I thought that was like a neat uh, sort of effect like the animated effect it almost looks like you're looking like I don't know through like one of those like windows that's bumpy. <laughs> I have no idea what that kind of window is called, but hopefully you know what I mean. But it, it kind of abstracts the the sort of truth of the picture away into just the palette, and I think that's kind of cool. Um, I think maybe 1000 is too much because you, you don't even get to see the picture at all. Yeah, with, pit, with, the, with the circles, I think even, like, I think just having them show up one at a time is probably good enough, but like, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I, I, I think I prefer sort of the pixel perfect like line effect. So I'm going to go back to that, but you could play with that uh, a little bit more. So let me, uh, I just need to control Z a bunch of times. I think uh, it's going to go back to using different images now, yeah, whatever. Is that right? Um, maybe. I don't know if I've hit it enough times. Let's see. So no, <laughs> I might have hit it too many times. So what did I do? I started Y up here, and then I said Y plus plus, and if Y is greater than or equal to height, then no loop. That's what I did. Um, fuck what? Oh, um, why? So I've messed up my code somehow. Uh, let's just see. I've got why. Oh, it's because I don't even set it to zero. So there you go. Oh, I'm still, <laughs> that's funny. I'm still drawing circles. Um, so I don't know. You can see there's different options. Uh, this was an accident, which is kind of cool, but um you could you could play with different uh different different ways of drawing the uh the target pixel i'm going to go back to um my single pixel though cool Yeah, man, I'm into that. I, I think that this is very close to what I am going to end up posting for today's January prompt. Um, one other thing I want to play with is uh, I'm going to go back to this idea of the, the palette. Um, I uh, I've chosen this palette because it's today's January prompt, but you could you, there's a lot of freedom in, in what you choose as your palette. So I started out this example, like random, like kind of extreme neon colors um, to start with. And then I went to the January colors. So next I want to, uh, so the, the idea that I'm basing this off of is a, is a sketch I wrote in processing a few years ago. And that sketch, the idea was I was going to limit my palette to only the colors that 
uh, the like original like Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES could uh, draw. So like NES palette. Um, the, the the NES was like limited to a certain num certain amount of colors, and so you can sort of see them here. And so any game that was on NES only had these colors and there were other there were tricks that they could play to to like make it look like they had more colors basically but really they only had these colors um, i'm probably oversimplifying that and if you're like an expert in uh like console like video game color techniques you probably are yelling at me right now but whatever i'm going to oversimplify and say here are the colors that that, that ness used and so what i can do is go to a line of code that I that I prepared earlier because it's kind of long um, is basically take my palette from this from these pal from this palette so I went I did some homework and I converted each of these into uh, like hexadecimal notation and then I created a, an array of strings from that so that looks like this so now my palette, instead of being the January thing, it's now the Ness palette. And so what this sketch will do, and I don't have to change anything else because all the other logic is the same, what I should see is my image recolored using the Ness palette. So you can imagine that now we're like in a in a 8-bit video game. Uh, and Let's see. Oh, it's funny. Uh, because my um, because my array is so much longer, it's this is taking quite a bit longer. And there are some tricks I could play. I do think that um, I could resize my image to be smaller. I could add a for loop in here that maybe does like 10 rows at a time to speed it up that way. Um, I could just sit here for a while and, and wait. Um, actually, I think that that, that picture is not going to end up being very interesting because it's mostly dark. So let me go back to like, I don't know, man, let's go back to our B just for, just for old time's sake. And let me just really quickly think if there's a way I can speed this up a little bit more. Um, mm, I could resize my image, but then I'd have to change like my width and height logic here. Um, let me just maybe add a, a for loop here. So for... Um, I actually don't know if this will get any faster because I think we're being limited by sort of the frame rate. Um, you know what? Let's just let's just sit here for a minute. Let's uh, it'll be like a Zen-like uh, activity where we just wait for a second. And because I used the wrong path, that's not Zen-like. Come on. So all right, let's just let's just sit here together and and watch as as my B image is recolored using the Ness palette. And so I'm, I'm taking the colors from the original image and for each pixel, I'm finding the, the color from the Ness palette that's closest to that, uh, that color and recoloring it using that sort of target color. And, you know, if I was more into sort of the uh, like optimization side of computer science i might think a little harder about like caching some of these calculations and so like this picture has a lot of green and a lot of yellow which apparently maps to a lot of blue and a lot of like magenta um, um, instead of calculating that for every single pixel what i might do is you know cache that somehow and say like hey if if you're yellow then i no longer need to loop through the entire palette i already know that you're going to be magenta but that, that if that sounds interesting like go for it that's that's totally awesome but to me that sounds kind of tedious and and not very interesting and i'd rather just sit here for five minutes and ramble while my image is recolored so yeah man this is cool i like this so you could you could throw in a, a different image into this sort of Ness palette, um, or you could play with a different palette, or you could play with different, uh, like instead of drawing a pixel by pixel, maybe you maybe draw squares or like maybe blockier uh, elements. 
But I think um, I think I'm pretty happy with this. I do think I'm going to go back to the like Target palette, the January palette, um, just because it, the Nest palette I think just takes a little bit too long in JavaScript. And yeah, now like compared to um, the Nest palette, this feels like it's super fast. Yeah, cool. I'm pretty happy with this. So uh, I think what I'll end up posting is probably um, one of the Horizon pictures. Um, this is my house. Actually, my house is like right here somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm, I'm really into that. I think that's really cool. It looks like a, I don't know, it could be like an album color co cover or something. I don't know what kind of band, though. You can tell me in the comments what kind of band would use this kind of uh, album cover. I'm just kind of trying random pictures at this point. I, I don't remember what these are ahead of time. I want one that's kind of like a sunset. Um, let me cheat a little bit. Let me open up my this folder on my desktop just so I can find a cool one. Maybe let's try 30. <laughs> this might just end up being completely yellow. Oh no, there's some orange, that's cool. No, that's that's awesome. Like I said, I'm I'm really happy with this. I this this came out better than I was sort of expecting it to. Um, twenty seven might be a cool one. <laughs> Maybe I don't know though. <laughs> that one ends up being mostly yellow. Um, I'm gonna end in a second but let me just maybe try a couple more just find one that i really like to just kind of end on i think this might be the one yeah i think that's 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 pretty cool i think i'm going to end there um so to sort of recap what we did was first we uploaded an image or two or in my case about 50 um, then we loaded the image and we resized it we created a palette uh, we played with a few different options one was just kind of colors that occurred to me as being easy to uh, like think about um, but they ended up being kind of extreme and maybe not super interesting then we used the palette that was sort of given to me by the January prompt. And f for the palette, there, there were a few different things we could do. We could draw the entire image at once, which would mean like adding another for loop here um, to loop over the Y, but uh, we ended up animating it uh, one row at a time, which is, I think is more interesting with uh, JavaScript's sort of limitations on, on speed. Or you know this, the limitations of how I coded it. Honestly, it's probably not JavaScript's fault. Anyway, uh, for each pixel, whether we are animating it or doing it all at once, um, we get the color from that pixel. We find the closest color from the palette, and then we draw the palette color. And to find the the closest palette color what we do is we treat the RGB values of both colors sort of as XYZ uh, values, and we use the dist function to find the, the, the color with the RGB coordinate that's closest to the, the color that we are looking at. Uh, and you end up with uh, cool little effects like this with the sort of image filter. So I'm pretty happy with this. And I think this is very close to what I'll end up posting, but you could play with different kinds of animation. So uh, you saw that like drawing a random circle using the filtered color was pretty interesting. Uh, you could draw a square instead. You could draw, you could use different palettes. So, you know, use your favorite colors or uh, some kind of palette that, that ends up looking interesting or like telling a story that, that uh, you find compelling. Um, 
or you could you know you could add a little bit of randomness to it so maybe it's not like just from this palette maybe there's some randomness to your palette um but yeah there are a bunch of things you could do so hopefully this serves as as a like jumping off point for anything that you want to that you want to experiment with but i'm pretty happy with this so i think this is this is pretty much what what i am going to end on so um looking ahead uh i might uh, let's see like january tomorrow's january is 500 lines um i might do that tomorrow i might take a day off i might uh, do something completely random we'll see um, but i'm going to call this video done so uh I, I should find a better way to end these videos i always just kind of awkwardly ramble for a minute and then sign off but uh, i'll just say thanks for watching and you know leave a comment come say hi on happy coding all that stuff but for now, have a good day. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy coding.